Hi guys, welcome to Mangotology. I'm Stephen Mango, and I'm an ex-Scientologist who's been exposing Scientology for a decade now. And as you can tell, I'm not here in my normal, happy, cheerful, bubbly sort of self or persona that you guys are normally used to seeing me. I'm honestly pissed off right now about what has been going on with my friend, Doug Kramer, who has gone missing over the last 24 hours, and the antics that the ex-Scientology community has gone to, the extreme measures over the last day to try to locate Doug. Now you guys may have no idea what's actually going on and I wouldn't have known either until I got involved and kind of like dragged into this sort of games and everything that people have been playing. So let me kind of reel it back a little bit, take a deep breath and let me tell you guys what's happening. So there are two people in the ex-Scientology community that I love and trust who are my friends. One happens to be Doug. Doug is the most warm-hearted, sweet, kind, generous, um, giving and loving to his audience here on YouTube, somebody who shares from his heart his trauma and what he's been through at the hands of Scientology. He's someone to me personally who, you know, in some of my dark moments, you know, we would spend two hours on the phone. He would invite me to be on his channel back in May, April, something like that, um, when I was scared to come on the internet, more so specifically Mangotology, and tried to provide that sort of like sense of community that I don't have. Okay, why don't you have that, Steve? I'm not here to share that with you because that video would be two hours long. I was not welcome to share my story for the last year, two years, however long, because when I did, I was gaslit, I had the ex-Scientology community acting like a cult to disconnect from me. And this is more so, let me put in for more context, the Karen De La Carrier situation. When I opened up and shared about how this person, when I was at my lowest, coming out of Scientology, took advantage of a young Steve Mango starting at 21 years old. When I needed a mother, I needed somebody in my life to like hold me and tell me I'd be okay after the abuse of what I faced in Scientology when I was young, 18 to like 22 years old. I'm not trying to make this about myself because I'm here to talk about Doug, but the point about this is, you know, Karen took advantage of that when I was about to commit suicide and tell me not to tell, you know, my husband Jeff not to tell, you know, mental health services because, oh, you know what? I could, you know, be able to take you in a session for more auditing. You can trust me. You can't trust those people. So when I spoke up about this, and this is what my issue with the ex-Scientology community is, and it's playing into the story about Doug going missing. Missing. When I shared about this, because it was critics attacking critics, I was gaslit. I had hate videos talking about my mental health, my age gap marriage, commenting about, you know, me being crazy, just like all the stuff they made hate videos, just like the Stan League videos that the Scientologists make to discredit critics. The ex-Scientology community was doing like that to me. You know, all the stuff that happened is, you know, multiple hours of videos and screenshots, but they're now platforming someone like Karen and her husband, Jeffrey Augustine. And I, you know, was shunned away from SPTV and all of that because, oh, Steve Mango, you know, did this sort of situation. So by me, again, sharing that is about me trying to let you guys know that there are only two people in the ex-Scientology community that I associate with. Doug, like I just said, you could tell I love and adore Doug. And same with my friend, Marisa, who goes by Diane Etex. We talk every single day for, you know, I record her all these voice memos for like hours a day. And she is somebody who has been like instrumental as somebody as like a friend who I could trust and talk to and somebody who knows what I've been through. I'm gonna link her video about Doug too down below. Obviously I'll link Doug's channel so you guys can check him out if you don't know who I'm about to talk about here, but um, I'm sure you guys do. But um, with Marisa too, I agree with every word that comes out of her mouth involving the ex-Scientology community about Scientology. Cause me, Doug and her are like the, you know, outcasts in a way of like questioning what, you know, other people seem to just like blindly, you know, be like, yeah, okay, let's go along with this sort of idea or whatever, or this person who's like the popular person at the time who's commenting on Scientology, for example. So we are the ones to kind of ruffle little feathers. We're not gonna like agree to not talk about about, you know, say Karen because she's a critic and that, you know, gives power to Scientology somehow. 
you know, when you're questioning a critic, or about the sex tourism underage, allegedly, you know, pursuing person in the ex-Scientology community that also has been platformed, and any sort of criticism about that has been brushed away. We're not here to talk about that today, but let me just say that Marisa is someone who, everything she says is like, wow, she is like always like so on the money. So again, check her out. And again, if I'm not making videos, basically I just co-sign anything that Marisa says. So let me talk about what's been going on. So yesterday, as you guys know, having no involvement with YouTube. I've been so burned by the ex-Scientology community. I've wanted nothing to do with it. Even though I have so much I wanna say about Scientology, when I try to come on live and try to do stuff and talk about, you know, things, I've been shut down whenever I, you know, said anything, like about the Aftermath Foundation. And, you know, now that things came out about that in the Aaron Smith-Levin situation and, you know, Mike Rinder, the Headleys, whatever, it's like, hmm, people are now starting to see, like, what I've been trying to talk about for the last 10 years about the cult-like ways the ex-Scientology community operates. Just like I said, disconnecting from me, trying to f fair game and slander me, whatever, attack, never defend, like that type of thing. I have been just trying to take care of myself, you guys, my pain, my tumors, it's been like a nightmare for me. So I'm in bed yesterday, you know, in the morning, and I'm getting all these alarming messages from people that my friend Doug Kramer is missing, He, no one could reach him, can I go knock on his door, that you know there's like search and rescue efforts to try to locate Doug so you can imagine just like if you had a friend in real life which I hate to be so blunt but you know I'm assuming none of these people have ever you know really interacted with somebody you know like Doug and they're just watching his channel as a youtuber so I hope you guys are following me here so, you know, I ramble, you know, I'm on the spectrum, so I'm always, you know, in my own little world here. So I'm waking up in the morning like, oh my God, what do I do, right? So I'm texting Doug, trying to see if I could, you know, be like, hey, like, what's going on? Because I'm getting messages here, you know, people are concerned about you, just hope everything's okay, right? Not really fully informed at the time. I'm not sure what time I sent him the message, honestly, but not fully informed about what was going on. But one of my followers who, you know, has been you know, messaging me about it was like, hey, go on Doug's live stream and click on the live tab because he has like a live stream that he was supposed to make. So here's the situation from what I gather at this time. Doug was supposed to go live, this sounds so dumb, for a live question and answer on his channel on Monday, which was yesterday. So a live Q&A, right? He was supposed to be there at 7 p.m. So now we're talking, it is now yesterday, which was yesterday Tuesday let me just find out on my phone okay yesterday was December 6th I oh, know today's December 6th Wednesday so yesterday was Tuesday I'm like the worst youtuber guys I'm sorry Tuesday so this is like Tuesday morning so granted now Doug has been missing for like 12 hours or something at this point missing um, in my opinion um, it's you know the quotation marks sort of part of it so He's supposed to be there, so because he didn't make his Q&A, there has been now rescue efforts. So let me tell you guys what some of these followers in this live chat were doing. Um, I understand being like, oh, like, you know, he missed a live stream, like, oh, I hope everything's kind of okay. Remember, Doug's a grown man, right? Like, Doug's like 50 years old. I, I hope I'm not like aging Doug, but that's what somebody said in the chat, right? So, you know. He's a grown man. I've had times when, you know, you oversleep and you miss your shift at work or, you know, some something happens, you go out the night before, you know, something just slips your mind. Because on StreamYard and these type of streaming platforms, you go on the platform, you type in, I want to go live on Tuesday at 7 p.m., schedule live. I could go to a restaurant with Jeff, I could go run a marathon, not that I would with my health, but, you know, I could do other things with my day and completely forget that I was supposed to go live. So what happened was one of the followers, a fan of Doug's, now it sounds weird that I say that, but because of the Aftermath TV show, there's now, and you guys may not agree with me on this, please just let me share my opinion of how I feel about this. There's now like a spectator sport of sort, which is kind of how Marisa words it, and I agree with her on this, that we're like, there's like 
all these like channels, right? These SPTV people like, okay, this person's going live at 3 p.m. Then go watch that person at 4 p.m. And it's like people just spend like all day watching ex Scientology videos, which can't be healthy for anyone's mind, no matter how much we want them to lose tax exemption or be shut down or try to get justice. I'm all for that. But it comes to a point sometimes where there's like a fanaticism that comes along with this, where it kind of becomes like a cult of... Um, Outside of the cult, it's kind of like their own little group, right? Which is fine. You could support anyone on YouTube that you want, but, you know, to call yourself like a fan of somebody who left a cult when Doug's a private person. I used to want to be like a big YouTuber. I was doing drama videos on Mango Tea, and I was there, you know, with Trisha Paytas and Shannon Rose and all these different people because I was trying to become like a famous YouTuber at the time, which I'm not having any intention to doing at this moment. Um, sorry to share. Maybe on TikTok I'll do it, but it, Doug's a private person, first of all, you know. I just know from what I know of Doug, and if Doug wants to chew me out on the phone after I make this video, I will totally take it from him if he wants to be like, no, that's not true, Steve Mango, on anything that I say in this video. But what I'm trying to get at is that he's a private person. You know, Doug has had his own struggles mentally. You know, I'm not crossing the line to say that, I don't think. It's just, you know, just from watching his video as any person would, you know, he's been through a number of leaving Scientology and just everything that he's been through in his own life. So I deeply empathize with him because I've gone through the same thing. So when we've talked and had personal discussions on the phone between you know him and i it's like wow like it's like somebody who understands of like that community i was searching for when i you know i was in the hands of somebody like karen and some of her other you know ex-scientology colleagues i guess you can say that had like a nefarious sort of greedy purpose just like scientology when she kind of took advantage of me and my story was shut up so i know that that's how doug is so let me tell you so one of the fans of doug went and there's many efforts of things that happened yesterday, right? So people, ever since Doug was missing until the stream got shut off, people were in that stream for like 15 hours straight. The same people all day long for 15 hours panicking. I wish I had screenshots. I may have some that I sent to Marisa, just like, can you believe what's happening and screenshotting some of this? So if I have some, maybe I'll throw some in here on the video if I have a moment to collect those off my phone. You know when you get like so like mad and anxious, like you can't keep your thoughts straight? Oh, so this is what the person did. So they called the LAPD. Now remember, the LAPD is in bed with Scientology. Who knows if they're going to try to frame someone like Doug. They try to bust down his door. Who knows what their intentions are when you're calling a department that had Scientology video panels there. Again, the way Marisa said it, which I agree with, it's like if you haven't heard from your 42-year-old adult son for 12 hours, right? Would you go do what I'm about to tell you? So they called the LAPD non-emergency line. And they said that they knew Doug as like a personal sort of thing. Again, lying to the police, saying that he missed a personal appointment with them. A personal appointment as if they were going to go like shopping at the mall, like they're gonna go on Rodeo Drive and go on a shopping spree that, oh, let's call the LAPD and use and waste resources saying that a YouTuber, remember you guys, this is a YouTuber, no matter if he has 10,000 subscribers or 3 million or whatever, he's still a YouTuber at the end of the day. You're calling about a YouTuber that was supposed to go and do a live Q&A, you guys. <laughs> I, like, it's like, sounds so dumb. Like, think about that. A live Q&A that he did not show up for, that you're going to call and say that you want to file. And I saw like, with my own eyes, believe me or not, people saying that they want to, you know, initiate a missing person report if they're able to do that. So first they're trying to send search and rescue efforts saying, oh, he missed a personal thing. This is so unlike him to do this, right? They did that. They called the psych hospital, the psych ward. They called fucking all of you psych hospital where they held Barbara Cordova Oliver. One second, I have to reset my camera. I'm back. If you don't know who Barbara Cordova Oliver was, she was a Sea Org member who I actually knew at Celebrity Center who had a psychotic mental break and Scientology basically offloaded her and then she ended up at all of you psych hospital. Um, you know, she had a nervous breakdown. They put her on this other like Scientology like ranch, which was like you know, it ended up getting shut down, but you know, there's like some cabin and they like abuse these other Scientologists like in this cabin as like a mental sort of like retreat for Scientologists. It was a whole thing, but they don't think Doug was there, but they thought Doug was at the All of You Psych, like County Psych Hospital. They called there. They called four other LA hospitals 
to check if he was there. They called, again, think of how this is breaching somebody's privacy too. What if he was in the hospital, right? Maybe he wasn't ready to talk about it. I've been in the hospital. I wouldn't want one. I'm sorry, you guys. Love everyone who's ever supported me on this channel and give it to me. I would not like somebody I do not know showing up to Cedar sinai when I'm inpatient for an infection or something. I would be kind of creeped out Love you guys. Send me your well wishes, but I would be creeped out if I'm getting like a morphine drip or I'm on some sort of medication and all of a sudden, hi, I'm a mangotologist. I just, you didn't show up for your video this week, so I wanted to kind of check on you. I'd be like, who the hell is this? <laughs> like, no matter how friendly I am, you know, I've met you guys in real life. Like, I was at the Beverly Center at the mall, you know, whatever. I'm more than happy to talk to my fault. I love it. Like, I love knowing that other people are there for me when I felt so alone in my life, but... I wouldn't want them showing up to Cedar sinai so they called 4LA Hospital, so Cedar sinai UCLA, I don't know the other two, like, off the top of my head, but, you know, the, like, major LA hospitals that would be in the general vicinity of where he lives without disclosing where he lives. So they called all the 4LA psych uh, regular hospitals. Um, oh, so then they also checked arrest records to see if he was arrested, thinking, like, oh, let's see if he's in custody for, you know, being arrested. So they called to check arrest records. What else did, you know, people seem to do yesterday that was like, just like so crossing the line? There were so many things. And then there were efforts. Let's, and then I saw in the chat before I got in from one of the followers being, oh, like Steve Mango's gonna go knock on his front door. I was in that chat. I was not gonna go knock on Doug's front door. Not that I have his address anyways, but even if I did, um, I wouldn't be knocking on his front door. We have talked about collaborating. I've invited Doug over to my home. I've talked about going to his and stuff like that. It just hasn't happened with the timing yet for us to do like an in-person video. I would love to do that for you guys, you know, when the time is appropriate and stuff like that, you know, because I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea that, I, that I'm like, like cold-hearted, like, fuck Doug, oh, he's a big boy, he could figure, you know, he'll come back when he wants to. Like, I don't, I, I know people are concerned. I know people like love and care for him. He's a great guy, but I'm just coming on because I'm pissed off of like, maybe I don't articulate myself very well. Maurice is much better of kind of wrapping, you know, the whole kind of situation more concisely in a way than I usually do. But um, what I'm trying to get at is that this is just crossing the line, you guys. So they're saying that I would knock on the door and I said I went there like, oh, let's contact Lara FM. I get, you know, she's an ex-Scientologist like, and, and maybe like she could like reach out to someone. They call, they, you know, they contacted Liz Gale, who I also actually want to add to that. I love Liz Gale too. So I haven't had much converse, like two or three little, you know, messages back and forth and stuff like that. But I also love Liz Gale. So sorry, I like three ex-Scientologists, Doug, Maurice, and Liz Gale. So sorry, Liz, <laughs> if you see this. <laughs> Um, I like three of them. So they contacted Liz Gale. They contacted Mitch Brisker, who I guess maybe has been to Doug's apartment or where he lives and stuff like that. Like, let's get Mitch to knock on his front door, doing anything to try to track down Doug for hours and hours and hours. I'm watching this. Well, let me tell the story about the parasocial relationship with Gabby Hanna. <laughs> so if you guys remember YouTuber Gabby Hanna, she has millions of followers. The long and short of it, she made 128 TikToks in like two hours. She's bipolar. She had like a manic breakdown or something like that. Some crazy guy showed up to her house and he was filming inside there with Gabby. And you know, she was in a position where people are like, could she be like essayed, you know, that type of thing, could she be killed? Something bad may happen. So what I did, this was like two years ago, in the chat room, people are like, she's gonna die, she's gonna die. What if she drugs herself? What happens, blah, 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 blah. Let's see if the police show up, the police aren't responding. They're like, someone in the area, please drive by. So what did I do? Living, it's the same town actually that Doug lives in. And I was like right by there, because I go to Starbucks and I could just like literally pop up on the next exit to go there. I said, you know what? I'm not gonna go knock on Gabby's door. I'm just gonna drive by. If that guy like pulls a gun or a knife on her or something like that, not that I'm physically imposing, I can at least take a video. I could be there. I can call the cops myself. I could intervene maybe. I didn't know what my plan was. I just wanted to make sure Gabby was okay. As somebody who's just watching the live stream with like tens of thousands of people at this juncture. So I show up to Gabby's house and I drive by and I saw the police. I posted about this on TikTok. I got a couple million views on it and I got chewed out a couple years ago on TikTok. Those videos are not on my page anymore. I wanted to erase that because I realized no matter how good hearted I am to think like, I just want to make sure another human being who's a social media person like I was at the time 
is okay. I know what it's like to have a mental struggle or breakdown or whatever. So I just wanted to be there just in case. <laughs> so I drove by and then I'm like, you know, this is parasocial. I don't know, Gabby. It's not my responsibility to like save Gabby if, you know, she sadly has something going on. Like she doesn't know me from a hole in the wall. Like what if I'm like, why am I driving by? It's just weird. So I'm not gonna impose on Doug's privacy from like this cult fanaticism. So I know people are gonna disagree with me you guys may totally 100% agree with me too. Like, I don't know how this video is gonna be received because I'm being much more like blunt. And whenever I've done this in the past, people have taken me to be like, you know, just like the wrong way because they're used to seeing me be like, hey guys, welcome to Mangotology. My name is Steven Mango. I'm an ex scientist you know what I mean? And yeah, I am that way in real life. I'm not saying I fake that, but I'm just saying I could turn that on and I can turn it down a little bit when the time, you know, calls for it. And when people are t messaging you that your friend is missing and they're initiating a search and rescue team trying to be like, again, when I was physically assaulted outside of Scientology, when I was protesting at the, um, whatever the hell it is on Hollywood Boulevard. They, and you guys can see all these videos with like the security guard, uh, guard angel. And there's a couple of them that are being like more famous on TikTok now because they're like the guards that are on all these like TikTokers videos and stuff like that. Um, they're making like content. I don't really know how genuine these people are to want to like expose Scientology. They just want the views from all of this, right? But um, when I was assaulted and I was pushed into the building by the Sea Org member and, you know, injured my shoulder, the LAPD, when I did call for assistance, they took, you know, three something hours of me just standing there for hours and hours. When I went, they got my side, but they went inside, they talked to the guards, whatever, and they decided not to arrest him because they're in bed with Scientology. At the end of the day, even if I said I want to press charges, they would not do that. Scientology and LAPD together are just a corrupt mess. So you're asking, for example, for the police, and again, I'm not saying Doug is not a law-abiding citizen. What if Doug was on parole or something? I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm just making this up. Just say, just for the sheer entertainment of Steve Mango right now, what if he has a roommate who has a warrant? What if, or, you know, some sort of something happening, right? And you're having the police show up, and they run their name in the system, they say, oh, you're wanted for some sort of thing. I don't know, right? They could handcuff him and take him away, or his roommate, or something could happen, right? What if they showed up, and again, this is just in general, please don't take this the wrong way. What if a Scientologist got wind of this? Like, what if they're like surveilling Doug a little bit, just as they've done to me, and they catch wind on his stream that Doug is missing? You know, what if they had, you know, drugs or something, meth, I don't, I'm just making this up. And you know, the police show up, they say, oh, we have to search your residence. They plant drugs and they arrest them. I don't think they can do that. Like if they are like responding, there's some sort of like Good Samaritan law. Again, I'm just talking out loud and I'm probably crossing the line by saying any of this sort of stuff, but I'm just saying like, you don't know if they're tr the LAPD, the police, like, you're literally inviting them to his front door when he's a grown man, just like me. I have bad mental days. I do not want to be on camera. I have not wanted to be on camera for the last, I don't know, year or two years, whatever. I have not wanted to. I don't blame Doug if he wants a mental health break. We all deserve that. Um, we deserve time away from the entertainment aspect. You guys who were upset about this whole situation, you wanted him to entertain you on a live Q&A. That's what this boils down to, a live Q&A on YouTube, a video, like think like these people have to go outside, touch grass. You can come outside. I have a whole yard of grass here. Put your hands on it, become one with the earth and be like, you know what? The sun's coming up. It's early in the morning here in LA, you guys. Touch some grass. I'm gonna do this after this video. Breathe, everything's okay. The internet that these, you know, women just were like in the chat going, spamming. I love Doug, I love Doug, I love Doug, I love Doug. Like this was like a game to them, it's which I was going back to the spectator sport of people watching all of us cult members. And I'm like, <clears throat> you guys have to understand we are real people with real trauma who are in Scientology. I know never ends, I'm, I'm not trying to discount others who are trying to raise awareness, who watch your channels, who support us, you know, through all of our journey and stuff here. But you just have to realize we are real people at the end of the day who've been through it. You may watch Leah Remini on television with Mike Render interviewing people, whatever, and being like televised about 
this sort of stuff. And us putting ourselves on the internet is doing the same exact thing. And it's here for people to watch and to learn from and to get educated and all that sort of stuff. But it's for the entertainment of the viewer. That that person is then going to lie to the police. Oh, he missed a personal appointment. As if it was like my grandmother going to a doctor appointment. Oh, can you do like a thing? Oh, like what if he hit his head? What if he did this? And he lives alone, blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's not your responsibility. You do not know the guy. I'm sorry, if Doug wants this, then I will happily like, I don't even know what the word is. I would happily like, like I will take it like a man and I could get chewed out, you know, by Doug. Not that he's that type of guy. I'm sure he knows that me and Marisa have been trying to defend him from the crazy cults-like aspects that this is all happening. So if I have to take it like a man of being like, Steve, you know what? I want people to send rescue teams, psych hospitals, and like check on me, then that's one thing. The Doug I know, the Doug that Marisa knows from us talking, a couple other ex-members who, you know, we've been chatting with about this situation, do not think that Doug wants this. Let me see if he's texted me during this video, you guys, because that would be my life that I make this whole video and then he's texted me. Okay, I got two texts. I don't think they're from Doug though. Let me make sure. No, they're not. Okay. So you see where it's like the panic now that now people are like gaslighting me to think maybe that something like major did happen, but he's not arrested. He's not in any hospitals, not on the side, you know, like all these type of things. Doug also, I think from what Marisa was, you know, talking about in her video that he's had like family sort of, um, maybe somebody's like sick, like a grandparent, or there's something that may be going on. And again, I don't want to talk for Doug because that's for him to come on camera and talk about, but maybe he's going through something personally. Maybe it's his own trauma re-triggered and it's like I've had days where it's like I don't even leave the house for like two weeks like a week whatever and that's not for others to send a search and rescue team to my house I've had people when I had online drama people were sending like deliveries to my house like pizzas trying to get me to pay for them like just trying to mess with me there was a crazy youtuber during my drama on another channel and they called the cops who again presented to my house the same one that would come when I've had issues with Scientologists stalking me Karen De La Carrier also called this police department specifically saying that I was harassing her as an elderly person. She filed false police reports saying that she's a donor of the LAPD. Hmm, sounds like Scientology, Karen, just like how you're trying to like do the same sort of game, saying that she's an elderly person being harassed by me. I'm making videos on her on the internet that are like unhinged. No, I'm just sharing my personal story about what you put me through, lady, you know what I mean? Um, and you're a sick, twisted individual and you're a narcissistic abuser and I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. You ruined a portion of my life, so I'm not gonna talk kindly about you on the internet here. Um, and I don't forgive you. I, even if you ever apologize, which he never has, I do not forgive you, Karen. I never would. That's all I have to say about that. That Doug is a grown man. He could be doing any number of things. I even speculated too, I'm like, what if his cell phone service is off? What if his Wi-Fi is down? Like, I, he probably has another job that maybe he's going to. Okay. I'm sorry, I have a newborn puppy, more or less, and I'll tell you guys about that in my own personal video. Let me reset the camera. Sorry for the weird cut here. I know this video was all over the place, but Jeff just got our puppy, Luke, and brought him to the base when he just got home from our other dogs that were being groomed, and I told him everything that was just going on. So he's like, yeah, you're so, like, worked up. I'm like, I know. So, um, again, I don't even remember what I was saying, but the thing is, too, you know, sometimes, again, putting my foot in my mouth here, probably, but, um, or maybe I should be putting my foot in my mouth. I don't know how that expression goes. But, um, you know, sometimes Doug, like, you know, we talk on the phone or something. And then, like, I don't know if the phone gets shut off or the texts are green or something happens. And then, like, a few weeks later, Doug's just like, oh, I'm back, right? So sometimes he goes, whether he's working, whether the phone service gets shut off. I'm just speculating for the people who wonder. I think that's what could have happened. So these people are like, oh, not that it's anyone's business. But I'm just saying, like, same thing with the Wi-Fi. What if his Wi-Fi, like... I'm just, again, throwing this out there. What if you didn't pay the Wi-Fi service? I don't know. What if that happened? Then when people are like, oh my God, this is so unlike him. He would have canceled the stream. Like if he was like, like this is so unlike him. He should have done a little, whatever, right? It's like, not if your internet service gets shut off, you can't go like on. And it's like, maybe he doesn't owe you anything. He doesn't owe you a live stream. He does not owe you for your entertainment, a Q&A video, a live q and I'm sorry. I know you guys love like watching us and our videos, whatever. This is our real life. He has real trauma. I'm defending Doug with this video that it's unhinged. It's kooky. It's where this cult fanaticism of these people, I won't even name names of some of the people that I'm thinking of. Um, I should just do a whole video on the Scientology community so you guys can kind of know because I know people, oh, so you're just jealous because you're not on others' live streams. Your channel doesn't have any subscribers or views and blah, 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 blah. 
I don't care, you guys. I won $121,000 in the casino since June. Just gambling, you know what I mean? Like, I have way more money than I need, like, in reserve, just sitting in a bank account. I never had this much money in my life, just, like, randomly. So I'm just saying, it's. I don't care about making 100 bucks on a video. Like, if I make any ad revenue on this video, then I'll donate it to, not the Aftermath Foundation, but I'll take Doug out to dinner if he, you know, resurfaces in the next week or so. I'll use the, you know, pennies of ad revenue, the 50 bucks, and I'll take Doug to Beverly Hills for a nice dinner, and I'll treat the man. So, Doug, this is our open, um, my open invitation to you to take you to dinner in Beverly Hills. Wherever you want to go, you want a steak and lobster dinner, it's literally my treat. We'll spend $500 on dinner together. Uh, we'll have a little night out, if you will, to laugh over this, like when he, you know, is up for it, because maybe he's going through something mentally. I don't know. The last time I talked to Doug, I looked on my phone, um, in text, at least. Maybe we chatted on the phone since then. I'm sure we have, but I think it was July 30th. Now, I know that's several months, but... That's how it is. Um, Marisa talked to him, I don't know, I could like check out, ask her on my phone during this video and see if she gets back to me, but I think in the last like maybe like week or two. He was live on YouTube the night before he went missing. Now, I hope that this isn't like in a Netflix documentary and I'm like completely like maybe, you know, what if, right? I hope not. I'm just over here just like, I just have a feeling he's just like going through something or he's working or he didn't pay the phone bill or the Wi-Fi or like something that's very juvenile of the reason of why he hasn't come on live. But the cult groupies who are like fans over like one of them has a photo in their header on Twitter and it's Mike Render, Claire Headley, Mark Headley, whatever. It's like the header photo is if those people are like famous and they have like t-shirts that have like Aaron Smith Levin and like other like characters like on the merch. Remember these people attacked me ruthlessly you guys years ago. I again this will be for the next video when I do it on the X Scientology community when I had like negative money in the bank. I was like, you know, about to be homeless, all this sort of stuff and I just like, hey, I want to turn my camera. I'm now living with Jeff at the point um in time like not, you know, completely, you know, out of the woods because we weren't married or anything, but um, just the point that, you know, I just want to make a little bit of money and raise $300 to fix my camera so I can make the ad revenue making these videos. It was me, Tori Christman, Mark Bunker. We were the OG SPTV, if you will, making content and stuff for you guys who didn't know anything about Scientology back then, you know, a dozen years ago. And um, there was many people who did it before me too, but I wanted $300 to fix my camera. I was chewed out. I sold merch that said like suppressive person, whatever, just to make a, you know, I didn't even sell that much, like probably a couple shirts, right? And all these ex Scientologists that you guys all watch, all those same people that I just mentioned attacked me and who would sell merch and who would ever like monetize this. And like, he's talking about his camera on a video, like his trauma on like a video, like a vlog type of thing. And this is so like crazy. And now they're all doing it after they like literally beat me to like a pulp for doing it years ago. So I'm just saying, you guys, being on the internet is like rough at times too, but the ex-Scientology community of how like some of the viewers who call themselves never ends, like I said, sometimes like I've seen never end shirts. It says like never ends. I'll have to like pull up a photo for my next video to talk about it. And it's fine to, like I said, to watch these channels, but it crosses the line when you're trying to like insert yourself in our lives in that way. And I don't think saying like, hey, some of you guys just need to look at yourself and the boundaries that you have and realize that this is just unhinged, crazy, like fanaticism is just like the way that I think about it. It's one thing to be worried or concerned or send wishes or like an email and be like, hey, like we all wanted to know what's going on. Like, sure, that's like very normal of a response, but the same people for 15 hours straight saying I'm not leaving this live stream until Doug resurfaces and calling him and just, it was so crazy. So again, when I have an update about Doug, I'll post it on my community tab if I don't feel like making a full video because it's hard for me to sit up, like just giving the pain that I'm in and stuff like that because it's in my chest and it kind of hurts. Um, and I'll come back with more updates, you know, obviously, if you're watching this, Doug, we love and we care about you, and we hope that everything's okay, and it's not some sort of crazy thing, but sending the police to his house and saying, should they knock down his door is just a little 
you know, too much for me to, you know, get behind to say the least. And just all the messages I got yesterday, oh my God, it was a little bit much. Um, but anyways, you guys, um, sorry for being so angry and all over the place in this video, but um, thank you for watching. You guys can leave comments. I read all of them and um, I'll respond to you guys today when I'm just laying in bed. I don't know what else, subscribe, whatever. I don't really care anymore. Maybe I'll be back to make videos. Maybe I won't follow me on Instagram. That's the only place I really post uh, is at Stephen Mang on Instagram. But um, I'll keep you guys posted and um, check out Marisa's channel. She makes the best videos about everything on this sort of topic. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>